Coming up on this edition of Tesla Tips and Trips, I am gonna show you how you can get the coolest part of an auto opening frunk for under $35. Oh, and it's super easy to install too. Keep it here. Okay, so we've all seen it online. The cool factor of having an auto opening frunk. You know, you flip open your phone. Uh, I don't think you have a flip phone anymore. You, you grab your iPhone or uh, Android and you open up the Tesla app and you hit the open frunk. And normally it just goes and it just kind of opens up like a half an inch. How cool would it be if you did that and it opens up all the way? and you don't have to spend a lot of money, and you don't have to know a lot of stuff, and it's pretty easy to install. So uh, I'm gonna take you inside my garage. This is the Tesla Tips and Trips garage. It's, it's a very secretive place, very high tech, and you probably know I'm kidding by now, right? <laughs> All right, let's uh, take you to the garage. I'm gonna show you how to do this. It should take you less than five minutes, maybe 10 and I think all you need is a screwdriver but I'll let you know inside the garage. This is how you are going to make your cool factor uh, a 10 uh, in terms of getting your frunk opened and not spending a lot of money. It's pretty cool. All right let's go. Okay to show you a comparison here uh, the one on the right is the stock one. The one on the left is the new one we're going to use. It's ironic that the one on the right, the stock one, is actually thicker. But uh, there you go, there's the difference between the two uh, that we're gonna use. So we're gonna use the one on the left here. So a couple of the setup things uh, I wanna let you know about. So I already have the system in place. So I'm gonna have a shock that's gonna be holding up the hood anyway. You uh, probably will need a helper, someone else to help you to hold up the, the, the frunk or you could use something like this piece of wood uh, to hold it up while you do uh, the procedure. It's, um, it's pretty easy, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, taking a look at the OEM uh, shock or strut, I think it's a shock. Um, this is the clasp you're gonna wanna just kind of move up, move over. Uh, you don't wanna take it off because it's really difficult to get back on. Um, you just kinda wanna lift it up and get it out of the way, maybe to the top here, um, just enough to loosen the whole mechanism and you can pop this thing off then. All right, so I already have the, the new shocks on the car, and uh, but I'm gonna just take it off and put it back on again so you can see the procedure. It's the same as uh, the original one. So uh, let's take a look and uh, let's get this done so you have your cool factor way up to 10. Okay, flathead screwdriver. You just kind of get it into this notch and get this, this clasp just slightly out of the way. All right, so it's slightly out of the way. This should pop off like that. The wood is holding up the, the frunk. Okay, so on this bottom part, you just wanna pop it off. You just kinda go toward the driver and it should pop right off. And there you go. So here is the one that I purchased from Amazon and um, it's very much like the OEM, it just has a little more uh, force to it. Okay, so you got the new shock from Amazon. Um, the clasp will be in place already. Don't worry about that, it'll still pop into place. Um, putting this in is way easier than taking it out, and taking it out was actually not too bad, right? So here we go. We do the bottom one first. It just pops into the ball joint. Boom, real pop in, real easy. Then you pop in the top and you're done, that's it. <laughs> that's the installation, that's how easy it is. So the hardest part of the whole process is taking out the OEM shocks, uh, just getting that clasp up slightly and uh, loosening that up so this can come out of the, uh, the ball joint and uh, you should be good to go. So that is how you make your frunk automatically open. Now I understand it doesn't automatically close, but shh, you don't have to tell anybody that because you've already opened the trunk automatically and people are in awe, they're like, ooh, ah, Tesla. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, um, obviously you wanna do it to both sides. 
Um, I've thought about doing just one side and leaving an OEM on the other side. I haven't tried that though. I'm not sure exactly how that would go. So uh, I did both sides and it pops up great. I've had it on the car for, like I said, uh, over a year. And um, that's it. So there you go. Um, automatic opening front. So cool. I've been wanting to do this video since I started the channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, here's a driving carry to, to close us out. All right, back inside the car now. I want to show you what I used and where I got it from. Of course, I got it from Amazon. Here's a screenshot of the, the, the shock or strut, either way you want to look at it, that I used to do this project and how much it costs. Um, you need two of them, obviously one for each side, and uh, it's, it's not a lot of money. And it's pretty solid. I've had it on my car for about a year now. Um, I haven't had any issues with misalignments or it going up too fast or not closing properly or anything like that. I haven't had any issues, obviously. Your luck may, may vary, um, but the, these are the tips that I'm telling you about that I've done and it seems to work. And it's very cool in that when you're, let's say you're, you're, you're picking up takeout. Uh, I use my frunk a lot for takeout, pizza, uh, Chinese, whatever because uh, I don't want the smell to come into the cabin. I'll give you another tip in a second. Uh, so I grab my takeout and I open my app and I open the frunk and it just opens. You got a handful of stuff. It's really convenient. It's really nice to have that feature and uh, just put your stuff in the frunk and then close it down yourself. It's not that big of a deal in terms of having the auto close function if you don't want to spend a lot of money. I get the auto close is equally cool as well. Uh, so anyway, that's what I have. Uh, the other tip I wanted to let you know about, so you've got your food in the frunk, you're driving home, and you don't want that smell coming into the cabin. Unfortunately, the intake is inside the frunk as well. For some reason, when you have it in your frunk, while you're driving, you don't smell it. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I gotta make a lane change here. Uh, but that's, that's, it doesn't do that. So a minute out from your house, when, when you're almost home, turn your AC all the way off. Otherwise, for some reason, when you get out of the car, it just floods the cabin with the smell anyway, and you've kind of defeated the purpose. So one minute out, turn your AC system completely off, the fan, everything, and uh, then you shouldn't have any, uh, you know, pizza smells or Chinese smells or, or anything like that heading into your car. So this, man, this video is packed with tips. I, I should put that in the name of the, oh, I did. It, it is in the name of the, the channel. Okay, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate uh, all the uh, the likes and subscribes, and uh, the channel is growing. It's so much fun. I don't know if you've noticed I'm doing more uh, driving talks. It's so much more fun. I got this amount from uh, Speedgen, and I could just I could do uh, road uh, coverage. I can do uh, talking while I'm driving, all that stuff. It's pretty cool. I think it adds a little more to each of the videos. So I hope you appreciate it and like it. So again, thanks for visiting. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff that. Uh, YouTubers seem to seem to want to do. I'll catch you on the next video. Tesla tips and trips is on.